Alright, hey guys, Verlis here, and we are doing another fan video. Like I said, I want to try to do two a day on the Fridays. So, let's check out this one. Uh, the comment is from Mandy Trekkie. She said that she hasn't really had a lot of confidence playing the game, and out of 12 years of playing the game, has finally made her first uh, successful competitive team. And when you say that your record isn't that great when you have 31 wins out of 55 games, you're still pretty fairly positive, and... That there could be a lot worse, so let's go dive into this game and see how it goes. Got a pink shirt today. Alright. This looks like, uh, is it 6v6 singles or doubles? Ah, oh, we got singles. Okay, so you have the Clef Key lead, and they have a Tower Flame lead. I've seen this happen a lot of times. What you should have done is maybe just stick it in. Keep Cleffy in and just set up a screen, make him that sacrifice lead that he is. Talonflame versus Charizard seems like it's also going to be a bad one. Yeah, you just wasted your first two turns to let him set up. I think that's, I could see a lot of like confidence problems there in that case. So let's see how this guy works. Damn. Um. I have a feeling that Talonflame is going to make this a really quick game until he goes down. Wow. Life Orb Rock- okay, maybe not. He might only be able to knock out two things. Okay, so he has Life Orb and he's locked into a Brave Bird. Yeah, he's going to maybe go down after this because of that Life Orb. Oh, yeah. You're, you're kind of lucky there with that Rocky Helmet or else he would have taken out another Pokemon. So that Talonflame just made it a 2 for 1. Which I've seen worse, so maybe keeping, like, switching out was an alright idea. Clefkey versus Pangoro. Haven't seen this one yet. You get that Reflect in, and you should be able to survive a pretty strong fighting hit. Oh yeah. Getting that Thunder Wave in. Good plays, good plays. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what you're going to do next, because, like, now that you... That Hammer might knock you out? Yeah. Oh, critical hit. It could have gone either way since you were at 80 health. It might have, like, gone on the other end of the percentage spectrum for damage. So Klefki didn't do too much craziness for you, but a Reflect uh, Sylveon is a good thing to have on the field. He goes into a Trevenant. Trevenant is a mean thing to go up against as well. Free Calm Mind. Good job. Ooh. That Trevenant is not okay. Let's see, how does this go? Yeah. You're knocking that thing out. Oh, wow. Now, I wonder what he's trying to do, if he's going to go for another Destiny Bond, or just keep spamming that. Alright, you have one awesome play to make right here. What you should have done is gone for a Will-O-Wisp, or, or something, if you have it on your set. Because uh, Destiny Bond will not proc from a Will-O-Wisp if he's trying to, like, just stay in Bond the whole time. And if he Phantom Forced, you could have outprotected or something. But he's going for a moderately strong attack. You're resetting up your Calm Mind, which is putting you back into the same position. Because I think he's going to set up another Destiny Bond, if I was him. So yeah, he, he's going into another Destiny Bond lock, which means you have a couple options. Just keep spamming Calm Mind, or use something status so that works you got a free calm mind and now he's going to go down pretty good oh uh, well that, ho hopefully you use calm mind or not because if you use calm mind he would have gone down you would have stayed pretty strong and now you'd be a plus two but i guess it does give you a free chance to auto set up on a with your Trevenant. Hmm. This 
couple ways. Uh oh, Age of Slash. This, I have a feeling that this is going to be a tough thing to go up against. If you have Will O Wisp on your set, though, it might make it a bit easier. There we go. And you actually landed Will O Wisp. I've had a lot of problems trying to get like Will O Wisp to be accurate enough. Ooh, he's going to go for Max Swords Dance, though. Let's see how you handle this. Leech Seed, alright. So this pretty much looks like my set. I'm actually not sure how I would handle an Age of Slash under my set, because he's just really hard to predict for me. And I'm, I'm try, I try too hard to out-predict him. So, he changes stance. He has a plus two with burn on a stab move that's not too strong against Trevenant. Yeah, I was fairly confident you were going to survive that. So you have the Lumberry Rest set up. Okay. Instead of, like, Protect with Citrus Berry. Never mind, this isn't my Trevenant. Hmm. I wonder what he's going to do. Because I've seen a lot of Aegis Slash is not going to defense mode, which really hurts them. But if he does, then good for him. Yeah, so he goes back to defense mode. I'd imagine you'd be using an offensive mode, because it's like the only offensive move, because it's the only thing you have left. Oh, alright. That's actually pretty good. That way you're not getting baited into that King Shield. I did not think about using a double re double rest just in case, but it worked. Because had he attacked you, you'd be resting from to full again, and had he King Shield, that was actually a good call I wouldn't have thought of. So another Swords Dance, you know you can survive it. So you can pretty much just be safe spamming rest until he dies. That's actually more annoying than my spamming protect until they die. Good job. Because now there's no way this thing can kill you. Because you're going to be getting that Lumberry back. He's going to go down in another turn, and his Shadow Sneak is not strong enough unless it crits. I hope it doesn't crit. That would make me very sad. Yep. This is, this is now hilarious. Hmm. So he, yeah, he probably doesn't go down this turn. That leftover saves him really hard, is my guess. Let's see. Oh, no. Wait. Damage? Oh, nice. Okay, this Trevenant is now a beast. Good predictions on Age of Slash. Also, I would have been scared that I wouldn't have survived, like, a plus six Shadow Sneak on Trevenant. So now you're just going to set up the same way? Okay. See, another nine turns in this battle. This is going to go on for a while, I, I feel. Harvest that Lumberry. Set up that Leech Seed. Hopefully the Hurricane isn't too big. Oh, that was monstrous. Never mind. Still get the burn, which does help. Good special defense wall against that Noivern as well. And bad accuracy on his part, which is cool. Man, fairies versus dragons. You don't, like, even though it's supposed to be, like, the big deal of the 6th gen, you don't see a straight-up fairy versus dragon conflict that often anymore. It's kind of weird. Mega Gardevoir versus a Sylveon. This could get interesting. I would have gone for a Calm Mind to try to like out tank him the first time and then turn a Shadow Ball into his face on the second turn. And let's, let's see how much damage this does. Yeah. I, I would have probably gone for a Calm Mind, even though two Shadow Balls would work. No, apparently not. I was hoping that Shadow Ball would take him to half. So, I mean, you're kind of in the same boat. If you Calm Mind now, you should be able to survive like two Moon Blasts. Which means you only need those two Shadow Balls to win. Mm. Uh, and now it's kind of... 
kind of done from here. I don't really know what you could do besides go, yeah, I guess I'm not going to survive this one. See, that's why, like, if you had set up that Calm Mind, you would have been able to survive those and kill him faster overall. That's about all I can critique there. Go Charizard. Oh, that sucks. Offensive set Charizard, which means Charizard X. Alright. I'll bite. Or is it not a Megazard at all? I can't tell, because I don't know the items or anything. So it's Pangoro versus Charizard with Roost. Okay. Free Roost because of Paralysis. Not bad. Free Dragon Dance because of Paralysis. Not bad. You just have to survive this hit and you'll be good. Big Crunch. Oh! See, this is why I was wondering why you didn't evolve earlier, because, like, you would get the speed boost to take effect, you'd have more defenses. It wouldn't have been as scary of a last turn. However, you do throw down that surprise, because he was probably like, okay, he can't knock me out. You go into Mega Charizard for the kill. Good job. And then the recoil. Oh, man. That's unfortunate. Funny thing about recoil. You can win with it. If they have a rocky helmet and you do something and it knocks you out, they win. But if you use a recoil move, it causes you to win. It's an interesting little thing that Pokemon has. So, critique. You ended up winning, which was good. You made a couple of plays that I wouldn't have made that were better in your favor, and you made a couple of plays that I would have that I wouldn't have made but that were worse in your favor. Most of all, Clef Key. It's called a sacrifice lead for a reason because you just kind of get a free reflect and I'm pretty sure that you could survive uh, depending on how defensive he is under reflect you can survive a super effective hit from a talon flame I've had it happen with me quite a bit which means that you then get into a thunder wave so talon flame would have only maybe been a one for one if you had gone into like a Sylveon to really mess his day up or maybe Mamoswine since he has he has that rock type move that would have been maybe something to see uh, I'm trying to think about the rest of the battle didn't get to see what Starmie or Mamoswine had in their under their sleeve because they went down so fast but you were pr doing pretty good by bringing out like the two health bulky Pokemon that way Talonflame would get dropped faster and then after that you handled the rest of the battle really well I just, I just did not see where you were going with all the switching in the beginning. It, it apparently worked out in the end, but I mean, you got outplayed by Destiny Bond a bit, and you got um, out, outbursted by Mega Gardevoir. So what I see is like, you don't commit to your setups. That That's how I generally play my game, is I commit to a setup. If I use one or two turns bulking up and taking a small amount of damage, or even a big amount of damage, I try to play it out as best as I can. If you see him using Des Destiny Bond, just kind of go, well, Destiny Bond has five points in it, so if I can get six Calm Mind, nothing is going to ever stop me, kind of idea. And since that is an Eevee, I could imagine that you might have Baton Pass on him, which means that you could Baton Pass it out to something else, even though you don't have anything special attacky. Just so you could keep those Calm Minds alive, I guess. Because, like, the Sylveon, it could have made your game a lot more easier, which is about all I got to say. That Trevenant was pretty awesome to watch. He was hilarious. Just because, like, I've, I haven't seen an Aegislash get so statted before. Like, that was pretty cool to watch. So now, I, actually, that actually benefited me, because I know what my Trevenant is capable of. Under a burn, he can survive a plus six Shadow Sneak, which is incredible. Uh, his special isn't that great, though, because Noivern destroyed him, but... Good battle overall. Um, as like I said, I could really see where the confidence issue is. Like, that's where it comes down to where you, where do you want to switch in to know you can take the hit, or do you want to just try to survive it since you've done put so much effort in already? Kind of idea. So I hope you find this video, um, you specifically, Anna Marie. I hope you find this helpful, and I hope all you other fans out there that are watching this video 
are liking Fan Fridays and also find this video helpful. Um, give me some critique as well on how I'm handling these videos. Am I doing it well? Am I doing it kind of off? Or am I doing just a great job and I shouldn't worry at all? So, hopefully you guys can stick through to the end, watch as much as possible, and have a nice day.